a man gets what he is destined to have god himself cannot violate this law therefore i do not grieve i am not dismayed what is ours can never be another's in this video i would like to narrate a story from panchatantra supposedly written by vishnu sharma and translated into english by chandra rajan the tale of the man who received what was his this panchatantra story explains markalis that is arapair satans philosophy of fate or niyadi or vidhi in a certain city there lived a merchant by name sagara datta whose son picked up a book which was on sale for 100 rupees in it was written just one line of a verse a man gets what he is destined to have reading that sagara datta asked his son my dear boy how much did you buy this book for and his son replied for a 100 rupees dad what shouted his father you fool you went and paid 100 rupees for a book which had one line in it with this kind of intelligence how will you ever acquire wealth leave my house this minute and never enter it again thus sagara datta threw his son out of the house humiliated by his father's words the son left his home for some remote land after some days a native of that land approached him and inquired sir where have you come from and what is your name and the young man answered the man who receives his deserts and he came to be known as just deserts now one day princess a moonlight stood with her friend looking out at the city she was so beautiful and radiant saw a young prince at a distance by the tricks of fate to be just at the spot at that moment moonlight what was stuck with her instant love and prayed to her friend to arrange for a meeting with that person her friend approached the prince and told him the message of moonlight the princess the prince asked how can i enter the palace listen said the friend at night you will see a stout ladder of woven leather hanging from a upper balcony of the palace for you to climb okay said the young prince when night fell the prince remained lost in thought he said to himself a perceptor's daughter or a friend's wife the wife of one's master or of one's man a man who approaches any of these it is said is guilty of brahmanicide and for the action that brings dishonor or leads to one's downfall or brings about the loss of one's wealth should never be undertaken having thought over the matter carefully the prince decided not to meet the princess in the meantime mr just deserts who was roaming around in the city at night noticed the ladder of woven leather hanging from the balcony of the palace out of curiosity and adventurousness he took hold of it and climbed up on seeing him the princess 
was quite confident that he was the right man received him with all the courtesies offered him a luxurious bath fine food and drink finest garments and the like after which she led him to her bed with her limbs thrilling with rapture from his touch she whispered having fallen in love with you at first sight i have given myself to you never shall i even think of another man as my husband now you know this why don't you converse with me but all the young man said in reply was a man gets what he is destined to have hearing this the princess whose heart almost stopped beating quickly sent him packing down the ladder mr just desserts made his way to a ruined temple and went to sleep after a while a policeman who had an assignation at the temple with a woman of easy virtue came and found a man fast asleep wishing to keep a secret safe the policeman asked him who are you sir and the man replied a man who gets what he is destined to have when he heard this the policeman said look this is a deserted temple why don't you go and sleep in my bed reaching that place as directed the young man by mistake entered the wrong room where the policeman's daughter named miss modesty a big girl with beauty lay waiting having made a date with a certain man she was infatuated with when she saw mr just desserts walk in she thought to herself ha here he is my own beloved failing to recognize the man in pitch darkness she rose and married herself to him by the gandharva rites then laying in bed with him she whispered how is it that even now you refrain from speaking freely with me and the man replied a man gets what he is destined to have she was shocked and plunged into thought alas this is the kind of unripe fruit that one picks when one acts without due deliberation she pondered over what she has done then having reprimanded him more from sorrow than anger she sent him out of the house as mr just deserts went down the main street a marriage procession was entering the city to the sound of splendid music and headed by a bridegroom named fine glory a man from another city mr just deserts decided to join this procession Since the auspicious moment was fast approaching the bride daughter of a rich merchant who was the president of the guild was waiting at the gateway of her father's mansion on the royal highway dressed in her ritually sanctified wedding clothes with the sacred marriage thread already wound around her wrist She stood on a beautifully decorated dais. At that moment an elephant in rut was rampaging, maddened, having killed its rider. It was creating no end of confusion as people ran here and there, terrified. And worse, the animal was headed in the direction of the marriage procession. one glimpse of the fierce animal and the whole entourage of the bridegroom too fled towards the far horizon in this crisis 
Mr. Just Desserts noticed the bride left all alone her eyes trembling in wild terror Don't be afraid I shall protect you he said in a resolute and reassuring tone then putting his right arm round the bride he addressed the elephant with admirable boldness severely taking it to task for the animal actually retreated and left the place in the meantime seeing the coast clear the bridegroom fine glory with his entourage of relatives and friends arrived well past the auspicious time set for the wedding and what does he see but his bride to be held by another man he looked around and noticing the bride's father remarked sharply hey father in law sir what is that that you have done it is hardly right that you should promise me your daughter in marriage and then give her to this man i was so frightened by the elephant sir fine glory and fled in fear i have just this minute returned with the rest of you and i have went a clue as to what happened in the interval answered the bride's father and then began to question his daughter my darling it's not a nice thing that you have done so now tell me what happened and the girl replied dear father this man came to my rescue when my very life was in danger so no other man will ever hold my hand not as long as i live by the time these events had become common knowledge the night was over as dawn broke a great crowd had gathered at the merchant's house hearing the story that was on everybody's lips princess moonlight arrived there learning of these events that had spread by word of mouth the policeman's daughter also came there not only that the king himself informed of the great concourse milling at the gates of the merchant's mansion arrived and spoke to mr just desserts now look sir speak freely tell me everything as it happened to this mr just desserts only reply was a man gets what he is destined to have the princess now remembered him and added a line god himself cannot violate this law then the policeman's daughter spoke it another line therefore i grieve not i am not dismayed having listened to it all the merchant's daughter added a line that completed the verse what is ours can never be another's after promising immunity to everyone concerned the king arrived at the whole truth by piecing together the separate narratives of the events provided by each one of the persons involved finally the king accorded great honors to mr just desserts giving him his daughter in marriage with a grant of a thousand villages then a thought struck the king remembering that he was without a son and heir he had just desserts anointed and appointed as the crown prince just desserts lived happily ever after in the company of his whole family enjoying all comforts and pleasures that life has to offer this story sums up the philosophy of mercury one sees 
with wisdom not with the eye conduct not birth is the mark of breeding contentment is prosperity turning away from wrong is true learning all the asivagars or the arivars thought the above that turning away from wrong is true learning